Hey everybody, Spencer Jones here with our live cooking show. I apologize for the delay about starting this late. Seems like we just keep having some technical difficulties. But nonetheless, here we are in the Jones and Kitchen for another week of gloriousness, of wonderfulness. Live, healthy cooking that, you know what, your family is going to love. They're going to love all these delicious recipes because, well, frankly, it's delicious, right? I mean, it just makes you drool with how delicious it really is. It's so awesome. And the best part, you can keep your waistline looking beautiful. Oh, that's right. You can keep it beautiful and stay on track with your diet by following these recipes. And I have crazy cats in here making lots of noise. It's a crazy day here in the Jones household. So today's recipe, I'm super excited for this one. I love making this recipe. It is um, a wonderful soup suggested by, oh, Karen, I believe. I forgot to look it up. I believe Karen suggested this one. I apologize if it's not you, Karen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. But, um, so this recipe is um, a hearty soup, right? So you wanted some good winter soups. And winter is here, well, not officially, but it's close enough. Um, it's after Thanksgiving, the cooler weather's starting to roll in here. So I thought I would give you a healthy, hearty recipe for soup. And this Southwest, uh, spicy Southwest soup delivers that. Now, I am using chicken for this recipe, so um, you, can use rest, uh, you can use chicken, you can use turkey, um, you can not have any of that and keep it vegan or a vegetarian if you like, and you can even make it vegan if you wish. You just gotta change up a little bit of your ingredients, and I'll tell you how you can do that. So it is totally customizable to what you need. Really, really cool that way. So without further ado, let's see what you need for this recipe. I forgot one thing in the refrigerator here. Let me throw that up. There we go. Perfect. We are set to rock and roll. Let's see what you need to make this recipe. Okay. So again, as I said earlier, I'm making this with chicken. So I already pre-cooked my chicken. I cubed it up and pre-cooked it. I cooked it with a little bit of seasonings that you'll be using later, which is cayenne pepper, cumin, and um, a little bit of um, chili powder. So that's what I used for it, um, just to season it up. Now, if you want, if you want, you can use, guess what, it's after Thanksgiving, uh, at least when I'm recording this, you can use leftover turkey. Yes, awesome, you could shred that up and make that. You could use shredded chicken, right? If you made chicken, um, you cook it in a, um, you could look at our files under chicken and you find um, a Southwest shredded chicken. Awesome, making it in a crock pot the day. You had shredded chicken for days. You can use that, right? Um, you can cut up chicken, you could even use beef or use none of it, up to you, your choice. But we are using cubed up chicken. You can need a little bit of oil. I have grapeseed oil. I have five red potatoes cut up. They're about medium sized red potatoes, nothing crazy, but five, it ends up probably being like me, three and a half, four cups worth of um, cut up red potatoes. You don't need them, but I love red potatoes. They're delicious, they're healthy for you. So I added them. I have about three cloves of garlic chopped up. Um, there, one was smaller, so it's like two really, uh, maybe two like decent sized ones. We have one red pepper, just one red pepper. I have one and a half onions. Now, the thing with the garlic, with the red pepper, with onions, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I'm using those random amounts. Oh, I have one red pepper, one and a half onions. Why? Because that's what I had laying around. But to be perfectly honest, you don't need to like, I mean, if you want to go store, get it awesome, you can, but you don't need to, right? Use what you have at home. I had one and a half um, onions. Great. If you have one onion, great. Make that happen, right? One red pepper, one and a half green pepper, purple pepper if there was such a thing. Use it. It's all good. A purple pepper would be kind of weird though. All right, we have one can of black beans. Now I'm using Bush's beans. I'm using the reduced sodium. I always look for the reduced sodium. That's always gonna be a little bit healthier for you. I have um, one thing of no salt added Hunt's tomato paste. Woo! We have no salt added again. Hunt's, oop, get on the right side of the camera, Spencer. Um, petite diced tomatoes. Now, I'm using, you see my, my lovely uh, workout muscle is in my tricep there. I am using chicken broth. I'm using unsalted chicken broth. Again, no salt added, right? So we're trying to keep this as healthy as possible. You can add salt during if you need. For these kind of recipes, I don't usually, but you can. Um, so unsalted chicken broth. Now, 
With that, if you wanted, I know I'm moving around a lot. Now, if you wanted to uh, make this vegetarian or vegan, use vegetable broth, right? Find unsalted vegetable broth and use that. That's totally cool and totally, do totally doable. So those are some suggestions for you. And obviously if you're going vegetarian or vegan, you wouldn't use chicken. Shocker. But that's what I would use. And then the spices you need are cumin, ground cumin. You need cayenne pepper. Mm-hmm. And some chili powder. Ooh, ooh. You do not need uh -uh, no bananas. No bananas needed. Oh, and I almost forgot. It's what I forgot in the refrigerator. Corn. Now, you could use canned corn if you wish. I don't like using canned corn. I'm using frozen corn. Um, this is like steam stuff. Not my favorite. If I was thinking and I had stuff around, here's what I would really do. I would have the corn on the cob, grill it, put it in there after it's all grilled. That's just me. That's what I would do, but you definitely don't need it. Um, using canned corn or um, frozen corn works just as well, right? Just another awesome veggie to have with you. Um, you want to make some venison chili. Oh man, Robert, I would totally be down for some venison chili. Sounds delicious. I just need a friend to give me uh, some, some venison and I'd be totally making a venison dish, whether it's venison chili or something for everyone. Um, since I've stopped hunting, I seem to have a little supply of it. I really should take up hunting again, I guess. Or Someone could send me some. I'll give you a shout out on a cooking show. I'll even feed you with it. I'll bring you a meal, depending if you live locally. Robert, I would totally give you a meal, but driving it down to Texas would be a little tricky. Just saying, just saying. Okay, so Southwest, spicy Southwest soup, the Jones style. Um, we are going to, I know it's a little dark in here. My camera, my light's a little not writing, but you'll make work. You, get, you don't need to see this ugly mug. All right, we have our big pot on, it's not a huge pot, a smaller pot, um, a medium heat. Now, this is one I use to cook the chicken in. If you make chicken, um, you're not using the like already cooked stuff, um, you know, from Thanksgiving leftovers or your Southwest, or even if you, you could even buy like the, um, what do you call it? Um, the turkey or like the chicken that you buy in store, um, already like pre-cooked chicken, right? In the store that they sell like You'll see it sell at Walmart. Rotisserie chicken, that's the word I'm looking for. Rotisserie chicken in the store, right? They sell it right when you walk out. You can use that and just pull some off, shred it up, works just the same. I have about a pound and a half of meat there um, to, to make for this rotisserie. Thanks, Robert. Oh, I hate brain farts. Just gone. Ever happening? Is that happening? It happens to me way too often. So, rotisserie chicken. Um, works well. You can use that, shred it up if you want something quick and easy and you don't want to cook your own. That works really well as well. But if you're making your own, make it in the same pot. No sense in making more dishes for yourself. Seriously, folks. Plus, all the tasty goodness of that chicken's in here. I cooked it in a little oil with a little bit of seasonings to sprinkle on. It's not rocket science. I just sprinkle it on. I'm using my grapeseed oil. I'm adding just a little bit more oil. Not much because I already had some in there left over from the chicken. That's like half a tablespoon. At most. Probably more like a teaspoon. So we're gonna let that heat up real quick. It's not gonna take too long. I have it on about a medium heat or so. And then we're going to add in our garlic and our onions first. Get in there. Oh, I hear that sizzle. Mm -mm -mm, good. Yeah, I know. When you hear that sizzle, you know it's just right. That's why you want to wait for your pan to heat up a little bit. That's gonna start searing the outside a little bit and cooking it right away. Helps it not be mushy or gross. These from what I find. All right, adding in our lovely onions. One ball on the floor, we'll toss it in the sink. Hello, it's breaking apart on me. There we go, okay, we'll put that over here. We don't need the stuff that fell on the floor. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. So as this is cooking here, I'm just gonna stir it around. And now if you watch some of the other um, episodes of the Jones and Get Fit live cooking show, you can catch them all on YouTube, by the way. Just uh, search, go into YouTube and search uh, Jones and Get Fit. And uh, like our videos and subscribe to our page, please. Actually, if you all could, I would greatly appreciate it. We're so close to 100 for as of right now. It's awesome. Anyway, you cook the onions in the pan that you already like, made your chicken in, steak in, whatever. And it's going to take all that, that tastiness, that, that deliciousness 
on the sides, that's cooked on the sides, and the liquid from the onions and the, the abrasion of it is going to rub it off and it's just going to be soaked right in and it's going to be delicious. Oh, so good. So good. So good. So, what we're going to do is we're going to let that cook down a little bit until the onions become translucent-ish, right? So, it takes a couple minutes for them to be set. I just dice them up and you're set to go, right? Now, that was one and a half. You could use one um, onion, whatever you need to be set. And then we're going to slowly start adding in our other ingredients. And then we make it into a beautiful soup and it's delicious and it's southwesterny and it's amazing. So as this is cooking up here, um, I want to let everybody know it is, um, as I've already mentioned, it's right after Thanksgiving here in 2017 and I, Spencer of Spencer Jones and Jones Zia Fit, just released my first book, my very, very first book, um, just released it the day before Thanksgiving, um, Black Wednesday, as it's so called by some people. Um, so this book is called Jonesin' for Beyond the Breakers. <laughs> kind of catchy, isn't it? Jonesin' for Beyond, Jonesin' Get Fit, Beyond the Breakers. Okay, anyway, the book, I wrote it based on my trip um, to Pompano Beach to fish in the Sailfish Smackdown when we chased sailfish out of our kayak. And I learned so much on this trip. It was, it was scary, it was nerve-wracking, I had highs and I had lows, a lot of lows, and then some really good highs um, and all that. And so I wrote this book to, to share not only my experience, it's based on my experience, but I'm sharing what I've learned on this trip. And the goal of it, the point, the purpose of the book is to help other anglers, other kayak anglers, go out and go offshore, go beyond the breakers, for their first time, or maybe the second or third time even, to help them be better prepared for it. Now, I did as much research as I could. I, I um, you know, read a lot, as much as I could on websites and blogs and, and looked at videos of kayak anglers, of boaters, and, and doing all this stuff and trying to, to get as much information as I could. But when push came to shove, push came to shove, I felt unprepared for, for the whole event. And I went there with my buddy Israel, uh, and we did our best, we forgot the rest, uh, and we just, we just brought everything we could. And we learned a lot. Now, even if you read this book and you go out there, you're still going to learn a lot. But, you will be more prepared for this experience. And so, I would love it if you could pick it up. You can find it on Amazon or Smashwords.com. It's a publishing site, so Smashwords or Amazon. You just uh, search Johnson for Beyond the Breakers. That's J-O-N-E-S. I N apostrophe, right? Uh, beyond for beyond the breakers, um, you search for that, and you can get it. It's uh, three ninety eight for the book, and it's an ebook. It's short, lots of pictures. How to guide explains, walks you through what kayaks to buy, or what kayaks would be best, or what I have seen, and what I think works, and why. Um, what kind of line should you use? Reels, um, poles, how to launch, how to come back in from, you know, how, how to come back in after you've been out on the water, etc, etc, etc. Plus, you'll get a, exclusive access to an interview I have with the founder and director of the Extreme Kayak Fishing Series, the, guy, the guys who put on the sale for SmackDown. So, that's all on there. So, if you get it, I would really, really appreciate it. You can go buy that book and tell your friends about it, share it, and let people know that it's out there because I wrote it to help people. People aren't going to know about it or be able to be helped by it if they don't know about it. So, I appreciate it in advance. Whew. Now that we've got that out of the way and talked about, our onions are translucent! They're beautiful! Woo! If you had smell of vision right now, you'd smell some beautiful onions and garlic all cooking up in here. Delicious. Be careful if you're doing that at your home, you don't know, turn it too far and you're like, oh, hey, look, son, look at this. Oh, onions, garlic in the face. Like, no, I'm blinded now. That wouldn't be good. I'm getting way off subject. All right, now we're adding in our peppers. Got them in. We're gonna add our beans in this lovely mixture. So our black beans are rinsed and added in. We're just gonna stir that in real quick like. Make sure that's all good. Mmm, looks delicious. Now we're going to add in, we'll add in our broth first. 
So we're going to add in this whole thing, which is four cups worth of broth, if I remember correctly. How much is in here? Four cups? All right, yeah, four cups. So this is, again, unsalted chicken broth. Now, I'll turn the heat up a little bit. If you wanted to use a, um, if you want to make this vegetarian or vegan, use a vegetable broth, right? Look for the unsalted kind if you can. You can always add salt afterwards, and your body's going to thank you for it. So we have our broth in there. Um, I'm going to need a spatula. I forgot one. Let me grab it out of my drawer. Here we go, a little spatula. We're going to put in our uh, no cell edit petite diced um, tomatoes. You could use um, not petite sliced, or diced, you could just use diced, um, sliced, whatever. You can use your own. Now, the best part is if you have your garden or have a garden and you're making all this stuff, you could use your own homemade. Oh my gosh, how delicious would that be? If you have corn out of your garden, peppers, onions, and you're like, you're making all this stuff, tomatoes, you could easily either can it or make it fresh, right? Um, paste is just tomatoes blended and reduced down into a paste. That's all it is. So what you could do is just use your tomato sauce that you made and then cook it and cook it and cook it and reduce it down till the whole thing becomes a consistent consistency you like it to be. Um, if you use paste, what it does is it helps thicken up the whole thing right off the bat um, if you buy paste, right? So it's just reduced down because it's going to be absorbed into everything else and made into a delicious soup broth. Get that one out. It's not being too cooperative. Shocker of shocks. There we go. All right. So now I turn the heat up to uh, a high heat just to help it start to boil up a little bit. And I'm mixing in the chicken broth and the tomatoes and tomato paste, right? So let me bring you over here really quick before I start adding anything else. So you can see what it looks like because I find it's helpful to know what it looks like. Boom. Check that out, folks. Oh yeah, so it's you can see it's not thick, it's not like chili, right, where it's a thick consistency, it's still very much like a soup consistency, which is what we're going for with it being spicy, southwestern soup. Okay, so now we're going to add in our potatoes. Now these are five cut up red potatoes. If you don't want to use potatoes, you're not a fan of potatoes in it, fine, don't use it. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings. It's just, I like the little extra carbs in there, um, and I've added, I find it adds a really great texture to this soup. Okay, and then we have some of our chicken. We still have our corn. We're gonna add shortly. Now, you're gonna to want to add about one teaspoon of cumin into, ground cumin, into your soup. So. We're going to eyeball this as one teaspoon. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll say about ten shakes. Um, I, if I'm not counting right, not a big shocker. Chili powder, we're going to add about half a teaspoon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like a little chili. You can add more for spice. You can always add more as it's cooking. Taste it. See how it works for you. Now, for cayenne, you want like an eighth of a teaspoon. So we're going to do this. One two, three, that's going to be plenty for that. Again, judge it, start with less, you can always add more to it as it's cooking. So you taste it like, eh, you know, it needs a little bit more punch, or you know, use a little bit of this. But, remember, once you have it in there, you can't take it out, folks. It's in there. It's in there for the good. You can't take it out. Okay, so then we have um, our corn. Again, if you use one, you use one can of corn, that's great. Uh, we have this bag of corn. It is, how much is in this bag? Let's see. Well, I ripped that off. That's helpful. Let's see. Mm-hmm. That doesn't help me either. Two-thirds cup, 30 servings, two times three is... It's about two plus cups of in here. Um, we're just going to add the whole thing. That does not look like two cups. One and a half, two times three. Oh, maybe it's just shy of two cups. Whatever. I can't do math. It hurts. So that's frozen corn that I'm using. Again, if I was using corn um, or fresh corn, like corn on the cob, that would be my ideal situation. 
um, I would be adding that in here. That'd probably be about two cups worth for me personally. Add as much as you like, as much as your family likes. Totally customizable. Yes! Family meals that are customizable. I love it. Now we already have our pre-cooked chicken. Again, you can cube it up and cook it like I did. You could buy the rotisserie chicken. Thank you, Robert, for helping me with that word. Um, rotisserie chicken. You could use leftover turkey, leftover chicken. You can make shredded chicken. Whatever. It's all good. And we're just going to add that. It's all cooked already. Oh, see all that goodness right there on the plate? We're going to attempt to get some of this goodness off here because it's so good. That didn't work out. Don't do that. That was a stupid idea. And I did it on live video. Yay! All right. There we go. And I'm glad I picked this size pot. It's almost overflowing. So now, you let it cook. And you let it cook and you let it cook. Why do you let it cook? You let it cook to heat it all up and blend all these flavors. Look at... Let me turn off this light here so you can see it. Oh, that's a little, that helped. There we go. Now you can see it better. I'm holding this like with the arm going over my head. This is kind of funky here. I know. You're, you're going to make it. If I had a cameraman, hint, hint, folks, anybody who wants a, a free meal, you can come be my cameraman. That's why this looks really weird and I'm shaking. I'm bent at a really awkward angle. But look at how delicious that looks. Now, you let this heat up and simmer. All right, so simmering means it just has a little bubbling on the sides happening. You might have to play with the heat a little bit to find that perfect simmer, but you'll find it. So you get the simmer happening with it, and you let it simmer for mm, probably a solid 15 minutes. Um, you can let it go for a whole half hour, an hour, whatever really works for you and what you're comfortable with. Comfortable with. Here's what I used to tell when I know that I feel it's comfortable, is when my potatoes are soft. If you didn't add potatoes, give it a solid 15 minutes. If you did add potatoes, just wait till they're soft, right? So when you pick it up with a spoon as you're eating it, you're not going to be like crunching it, right? It just melts in your mouth with ooey tasty goodness of Southwestern soup. It's going to be amazing. Now, to serve this, you can do a couple things. You can just scoop it in a bowl and eat it. You can eat it while in chair pose if you wanted an extra workout as you're eating a Southwestern soup while you're holding chair pose. Yes! It'd be torturous and horrible and wonderful all at the same time. We're crazy. Um, another thing you can do is serve it with a little bit of cheese. So if you're following container systems, just add a little cheese to that. Um, that'd be delicious. And if you want to make it a little smoother, instead of sour cream, because that's going to add a lot of fat, a lot of calories that you don't need, what you can do is just use plain Greek yogurt, right? Not flavor, nothing like that. Just get plain Greek yogurt. Put a scoop on there after, you know, sp scoop this in your bowl. Put a little cheese on if you wish, if you wish. And then a scoop, <coughs> excuse me, a small scoop of your um, Greek yogurt and you're set. There you go. And you let that melt in and it's going to be ooey gooey and even creamier and smoother and it's going to be amazing. So there we go, folks. That is how you make a delicious and simple, customizable, spicy, southwestern soup. The Jones and Get Fit style. I appreciate all of you watching and taking time out of your day to watch this cooking show and being part of the Jones and Get Fit community. You guys are awesome. You guys and gals that are, are awesome. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like this video. It's easy. Just click below. Like, I like the thumbs up or heart or whatever. Or angry face. If you're like, oh, I don't want anything spicy or I don't know whatever and share it if you know someone that would love this recipe tell them about it below just you know tag them below or share it with them on their page and don't forget check out our youtube page we're so close to 100 subscribers as we're viewing this i know it might not seem like a lot to some of you but it's a lot for us so please um check out our youtube channel just go to youtube search jones and get fit and you know cooking show or something along those lines you'll find us hit subscribe and help us out Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a great week. Stay healthy, stay fit. Go after your goals, folks. We will catch you next week.